So this will be kind of a quick review, mostly because the movie I watched was so confusing that I don't know that I can talk much about it without giving everything away or giving nothing away. So um, this was today's Noir Alley film, Deadline at Dawn, directed by Harold, Harold Klerman. He was with the group theater, and um, this was his only film that he ever directed. He mostly did Broadway or um, New York theater. Um, it's based on a novel by Cornell Woolrich, written as William Irish. Cornell Woolrich has a really interesting history, and you should definitely look him up. Um, lots and lots of crime films are uh, based on stories by Cornell Woolrich. This was written by Clifford Odets. He did The Big Knife, among many other great noir films. Um, it was shot by Nicholas Muzukara, Mu let me say it wrong again, Nicholas Muzukara, Nicholas Muzuraka, there we go, that was hard to say, um, so it's beautifully shot, some of the best noir cinematography is done by him, and this film looks it, um, it stars Susan Hayward, I share a birthday with Susan Hayward, um, several other people do as well, and there's like, June 30th, that's my birthday, look it up, look at all the famous people born that day, it was a great day to be born. Um, Paul Lucas and Bill Williams. Now I looked up the plot of the original novel and I've got to say I'm a little irritated because in the original novel it's about trying to solve a dead guy's murder and they turn it to a dead girl in the film and I just I'm just I hate it when they do that like just let it be a dead guy. The one thing that's great about Riverdale is that it is a story about a dead guy and and that just feels revolutionary um, it shouldn't, but it does, because it's almost always about a dead girl. Um, the dead girl in this movie is played by Lola Lane. She only gets one scene at the beginning, but she makes quite an impression. Also in the film are Joseph Kalelia, who's in um, Gilda, Osa Masson, and um, there was a guy that I recognize, and I don't know the actor's name, but he's in like everything. You'll see him and be like, that guy. So the plot is that she's murdered. You're not sure how. Uh, Bill Williams is a sailor who somehow has her money, and you're like, you see her with the money, and then you see him with the money, and you're like, did he kill her? I don't know. He doesn't know how he has this money. Cab driver's kind of trying to help him out. That's played by Paul Lucas. Um, he meets a taxi dancer, played by Susan Hayward. He kind of explains... Um, his situation and then she's just like get out of my life until she discovers they're from the same town and then you're like oh of course they're gonna like have a connection now because that's how small towns work and so she's trying to help him in the next six hours figure out who is the real murderer and then get him on a on a bus so they can go back to their hometown that sounds very simple but there's like 25 characters in this movie. It's one of those ones where it's like a bunch of different vignettes. They all get sewn together by the end. But you're like, why are there so many characters? Who is this? Um, it kind of reminded me of the structure of the novel um, Butterfield 8. Not the film. The film version of Butterfield 8 is not as good as the novel um, in terms of structure. And in that has a similar structure in that you get all these different vignettes and things. Although in Butterfield 8, the novel... Um, none of the vignettes really tie to each other. They're just there because the novelist is like, let me paint a picture of New York for you. Um, so this paints a picture of New York. It has a lot of great lines, a lot of one-liners in this. Um, some of the best noir dialogue. You want to like see sharp, snappy crime dialogue. This is a movie for you. Um, it's beautifully shot. It's just a very nice B film from RKO. Filled with great character actors, great characters. Sometimes too many characters. It almost makes the big sleep seem like it makes sense. There's so many characters and so many twists and turns in this, but it's overall very enjoyable. It has a relatively happy ending for a noir, actually. Um, so I recommend this. It's, it's just a real fun one. And um, you got that snappy Odette's, you know, dialogue, and you've got Susan Hayward looking amazing, and... Um, one of the few times that I was like, okay, Paul Lucas, I like you in this. So um, that's that always says something when they present me an actor that I normally am not, I don't care for. And I'm like, 
one half badness. So um, if you want to see a not half bad Paul Lucas, um, I recommend this film. Uh, it, we just showed it on Noir Alley this morning. You can watch it on Watch TCM. It's RKO, so it might be available from Warner Archive Collection. I'm not sure. You can look that up. Uh, regardless, check it out. I'm going to try to track down the novel now because I am fascinated. I read the synopsis and it sounds completely different, um, but but like with the structure the same. So um, I, I just really need to see. I need to see it now. So I'm going to try to find it. Um, this was 1946's Deadline at Dawn, a very noir noir. <laughs>